guys, you're watching 1700. My name is Eliza and I'm here with the great Daniel and Emma from the band Big Orange. How are you guys going? Good, thank you, Eliza. <laughs> That's good. Now, first and foremost, you guys got together in 2015. How do you guys get with the great band name Big Orange? Well, um, we're actually from uh, about an hour and a half south of Perth. Uh, we grew up in a small town called Harvey and um, and it's known for, the region's known for um, growing a lot of oranges. Mm -hmm. And um, and when we were, at the time we were coming up with um, band names and stuff, uh, I just happened to be driving down to my, um, see my mum down there. And, um, and I passed a sign that said the big orange and um, it just kind of caught my eye, and I thought, "Oh, that might be that might be cool." And um, yeah, so we just dropped the V from the start, and yeah, big orange. That's that's us. There's also like, like one of those big, like um, what do you call it? Like a big monument there, like a yeah. a massive orange that's on the side of the road, which is now I think yeah, like the big pineapple and. Yeah, you know, those kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. But you can like come up and look out. But now I think it's a grape. Oh, it? I think it got changed into a grape. So now I think there's the big grape there and it's like at a winery. So, <laughs> well, now it's just yours okay. now. You can make your own. It would have been the big grape if, <laughs> if it had been a bit later. <laughs> there you go. Now, you guys are quite well known for your alternative indie rock, indie pop sound, which obviously is quite prevalent, prevalent in all your work. You've just released some brand new singles this year called By the Dozen and your brand new track as well, um, which is Love Is Not Enough. How do you think your guys' sound has transitioned and changed over the years? Uh, oh, I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I write quite um, eclectic stuff all the time anyway. It's um, on every, any given day it's it's going to be different so um i don't think it's really sort of um changed per se over time it's just how i write in general is quite different um sounding from um song to song so um yeah i think that'll always be a um a sort of um What's the word I'm looking for? Like a defining part of it? Yeah, of our band being being eclectic and um, having different styles. And um, so, yeah, um, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I guess like when Daniel writes, he's got like quite a lot of songs. And so when we're looking to release stuff, we just kind of try to fit songs together that kind of seem to work together well. So, yeah, yeah he's kind of got like a bunch of songs that have like a a more electronic feel and then a bunch that have like a tropical feel and then like some more rock and roll stuff. So I guess we've been kind of releasing the more straight up rock and roll stuff mm. at the moment. Yeah. I think. But yeah, they feel different. Yeah. Very different. It's, it's a hard one. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it is hard. Well, I know that there's obviously there's four people in your band. Do you guys, I guess when you're coming up with like, you know, your album inspiration and your song inspiration. Do you guys, I guess, have personal influence or does one person have more influence over the process than the other or is it all equal? How does it all work out? Um, basically, I, I bring the song to the band. Um, um, I guess I have complete control <laughs> <laughs> over, over and um, over 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 the songs and 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 how how they how they end up um i just yeah i'll demo them and record them and then i just and then lay them out for the band to and we just play play the band play the songs so yeah he thinks he has control <laughs> she thinks she has control <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah daniel basically writes all the songs and yeah does all the recordings at home and then we listen to it and then play it and then they sometimes change with the live set um, when we get together as a band but most of the time it sticks pretty true to what the actual recordings were um yeah very very but yeah they change over time as well I guess 
yeah, that would make sense, I guess, more and more as you become, I guess it would have been, you know, as become, as you know each other a bit more and more as you grow as a band, which makes really se- a lot of sense. Now, you guys have just released your brand new single. Can you tell us what it is about? And yeah, how did it all come about? Uh, Love's Not Enough. Is that the one we're talking about? Yes, Love's yeah. Not Enough. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, Love's Not Enough, it's just, yeah, it was um, written just a, a while back, I guess um, probably through sort of a experience of um, breaking up with someone and um, it's just about when, um, you know, the even though you love that person and whatnot, um, it's just not enough to hold two people together sometimes and um love just takes over and you and you move on so um yeah I guess it's just about that yeah I found it really interesting with some of the lyrics that I love I think which stood out for me was it's not enough to be in love you're more than you become and happiness is not someone which I found was really really interesting an interesting perspective of it as well yeah and how, how long did it take for you to actually write the song and it all come together um I'm just trying to think now because that song's been kicking around for a couple of years now. Um, I think uh, most of my songs kind of come together uh, relatively quickly because I I just kind of, I can't get them out of my head once I start working on them. So um, I'll just be sort of so focused on that particular song that... um, it's just usually a few days and I'm sort of finished finished yeah. with it. Um, and like yeah. how long was the production of creating the whole instrumental behind the song? How did that take? How long did that take? Uh, well, the initial, the initial uh, music for it um, happened pretty much instantaneously, probably oh, 10, 15 minutes. Um, and then I think the, the, the middle section in it came towards the end when I was just about to go in and record the song and then um, and it was just a great fit for it and um, so yeah that that sort of came came a bit later but um, I don't know again um, yeah yeah so I guess Daniel uh, yeah writes everything at home we've got a home studio here yeah um, so yeah I guess normally when he thinks of a song he just bangs it out and demos it and then um this track actually uh a lot of the tracks that we take to the studio Dan because he plays all the instruments himself um normally records them all in the studio as well um we just act as the live band usually but this one was a bit different so we all played on on this particular track so um that was fun yeah, I would I think that'd be really interesting to do and have that, I guess, that creative input. Is there a connection between, obviously, your recent new songs with By the Dozen and Love Is Not Enough? Is there a connection between the two? Um, no, not at all, really. Um, <laughs> by, by the Dozen was fairly recent. We, um, I think I wrote that late last year and we just went into the studio and bang that out and um we thought it, might, it was a cool first single and um so that's why we put that out but we had yeah like i said love's not enough had been around for you know um, yeah, a few years a now years. Yeah. yeah and we've been yeah it's been fun to play live that one because it's quite fast paced not fun so. not fun for jamie oh, yeah, not it's fun a really for hard <laughs> it's a really hard drum drum parts and he, he does really well because it's it's such a hard um drumming song so Props to Jamie. <laughs> Props to him. Props to him. You also released, obviously, a video in January for the single by the dozen. Um, how fun was that process? And are you guys thinking of creating a brand new music video for Love Is Not Enough? Yeah. So the by the dozen one. Um, so I just shot that on my iPhone with my nephew. Um, he really likes the band. Like he always comes to shows and stuff, and he's. Um, just really into music so I got him to stay over um, one night at my place and we just went to the park across the road and um, yeah I just basically followed him around with the camera and he found a pair of sunnies and 
um yeah <laughs> thought he was a rock star so I just so yeah let him kind of he did like a lot of the directing in it as well like he knew what moves he wanted to do and stuff in the park so um yeah that was that was fun and then um this next music video for love's not enough we just shot on sunday sunday yeah um just yeah at this um a friend of mine has been working out of this really cool studio um yeah and had it available for the weekend so we went down there and, and shot the video and so yeah we're just editing it now so that's that yeah. was and so gonna be coming out? we're gonna release it april 22. very yeah. exciting stuff very very exciting yeah. stuff um, so we're now going to pretend that we're in a break. So if you want to take grab a drink or anything quickly, you're more than welcome to. Um, yeah. So we're just pretending we're back and then we're going to come back in. Do you guys want to grab a drink or anything? Are you guys all right? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank yeah, you. <laughs> cool. All right. <laughs> welcome back, guys. We are with the amazing Daniel and Emma from the band Big Orange. Before the break, we were chatting about your brand new single, Love Is Not Enough. But now let's chat about all your exciting plans for the upcoming year ahead. So obviously with the recent releases of your single, are you planning on having an EP this year? And if so, what can we expect from the EP? Uh, so the plan is to keep releasing a few more tracks. Um, We're planning on, I think that a plan at the moment is to have a uh, album, I think. Yeah. Are we? Yeah, by the end. Yeah, so yeah. Although we haven't announced it yet, but yeah, we will have an album at the end of the year. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, we'll um there were, things could change. <laughs> never know. Yeah, never know. But um yeah, that is what we're working towards. So yeah, I guess we've got we've got it ready. So it's just um yeah, planning what what songs come next and which direction we want to go, because yeah, I guess it is kind of a mixed bag of songs again, which is cool. So I think, yeah, I think for it, you know, an audience member or a person who uh, like listens, I think it's more interesting to have certain songs that are a bit mixed bag and a bit different because I think it gives your overall taste of what you guys, your vibe is about and your sound. And I think, I don't know, I find it a lot more interesting as an audience member or I guess someone who avidly listens to music that it's more. I guess more genres that you explore the better. Do you guys find that when you're listening to your own personal music or other yeah. music positions and things like that? Yeah, I mean, uh, all my favourite artists um, that I grew up listening to and all, all, the, all my favourite artists have always had really um, different, different songs, you know, and different um, uh, sounds and like Radiohead is one of my favourite um, you know bands and and you know throughout the years I've just sort of changed um, so much and um, as an artist I, I love that so um, yeah that that's just kind of um, I don't know how how I sort of angle uh, take take to my my stuff you know the creative process what about you Emma do you have any particular inspiration or artist that you enjoy um, I mean, I like it when an artist um, kind of changes between albums. Mm -hmm. um, so when there's like quite a distinct kind of change between one and the ne next is really cool. Um, I guess like a good example would be like when Arcade Fire did Reflector and there was mm -hmm. like a lot more, I don't know what, like the more Haitian percussion and stuff. Yeah. Influences and, and with electronic um, sort of sounds and stuff. Yeah, so that's cool. And yeah, I guess that's just one example. Um, yeah, I guess like when Billy Corgan did Adore, when he did like way more electronic stuff was really cool. Um, Sufjan Stevens, like when he's done like full electronic stuff, it's been amazing. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess I just like it. Yeah, when artists like can totally flip stuff and, and change it up and still be very cool and explore different things. Yeah, I think it's it's I think it's a bit more enjoyable, I guess. I'm not sure. It's just my personal opinion. Um, so you guys have played yeah. some amazing festivals as well. So including in the Pines, Wham Fest and the Way Way West Festival. Has there been any particular amazing or funny moments while performing live on stage? Um, 
funny moment. <laughs> I don't know if we can talk about it. Putting, on this it show. putting, on, putting <laughs> us on the spot too. Um, uh, I mean, there was this one time when we played a show. I don't know if it was one of those festivals. It could have been, but there was a smoke machine on stage, like behind an amp, and we didn't realize that there was a smoke machine there. And I'm in, like, in the the chaos of like getting between acts. Um, we one of us thought that the amp was on fire, and so there was like <laughs> a moment of panic there on stage, thinking that we'd blown our amps up. Um, yeah, I can't really think of anything like too crazy. I'm sure that as soon as we finish, I'll have lots of stories. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't think of any funny stories for you. Sorry, it's <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's all right do you guys prefer or do you guys love obviously do you love prefer, performing live and do you love that do you love that kind of atmosphere and that vibe oh yeah i i, I certainly do i mean i i probably prefer um working in the studio and and um because my biggest thing is like the creation of the mm. song the sounds so that that's kind of like what i find most enjoyable but um I definitely love playing to, um, you know, playing with your friends and and just having a good time and feeding off the energy from the crowd and it's just always it's just yeah it's always a good time. Yep. Now, when you guys were younger, was there a particular moment or individual that inspired you to obviously make become a musician and do this as a job and a career? Um, well, my my older brother. Who, uh, who plays in the band sometimes as well. Um, he took up the guitar before me. And so I was just kind of um, always sort of, you know, being a pest and picking it up, you know, um, when he wasn't around and stuff like that. And I think that's how I kind of got into it. And I think my dad used to play as well. Um, yeah, you know, so. You think he did? No, I know he did. I know he did. I'm thinking that's why I, I, I you know, I took it up as well. You know, it was just around my pop. Also, he was he was a guitarist as well. So um, yeah, I think that's why I got into it. And me, um, I got you into it. Yeah, he got I me thought, into I it. I forced her to play. It. <laughs> <laughs> We've been friends for a long time, so we uh, lived together um, in Harvey, where we're both from. Um, and the boys had a music room there. I would always be playing, and then. That would kind of pressure me into playing, and then we just, and we just try and get anybody to like play an instrument. And, yeah, do this, do on, play yeah. this. And then I think I played a house party with you, and I got fifty dollars for playing one song. <laughs> I got a little cut of the. Did you? Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a bit. That's too much. Yeah, I played like one song with you. I was terrified. I was like, it's pretty good. 50 lots, bucks. Lots of kids there. It's probably all my pay. Nah, you got probably paid. Probably only 10 bucks. <laughs> nah, you're welcome. <laughs> now, do you guys have any advice for any young musicians who want to obviously become a part of the Aussie music scene? Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, I would just say work hard at it. Um, um, just concentrate on the actual craft of music. Um, don't get too sidetracked on all of the external sort of stuff that comes with music, you know. Um, learn the craft first because, um, yeah, because that's why we do it, like it's, it, to be a musician, you know. Um, but, yeah, that's the only advice I'd have. Yeah, and enjoy that part of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, do it for the love also, you know. Don't do it for any other reason, you know. You've got to want to do it. Yeah, that's completely fair. Now, finally, for all of us that want to keep up with your bands, Goss, how can we keep up with you on your social media? What are your social media? You mean our handles? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so we've got uh, Instagram, which is uh, Big Orange, the band. Uh, we've got Twitter, which is We Are Big Orange. And then Facebook's the same, Big yeah. Orange, Big Orange, the band. If you look up Big Orange, the band, there is... A link tree on the Instagram and you can find everything on there. Perfect, nice and simple. Well, thank you guys so much for this wonderful interview. Really appreciate you guys coming on and have a lovely rest of the night, rest of the day. <laughs>
Thank you for thank having you. us. We really appreciate the support. Of course. Thank you.